Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Pitch Me Moms. I love this show because I get the awesome opportunity to talk about whether or not your business is viable and whether or not you're viable. And given everything that's going on in the world right now, uh, we need that feedback. We need to know whether or not what we have is going to sell. We need to know whether or not we've got the mindset, the commitment. We got to know whether we have what it takes because otherwise we're wasting time. Now last week we talked about how 90% according to Forbes magazine 90% of entrepreneurs are failing which is nauseating because we're putting our hearts out there because we are going out there to succeed because we need the money for our families we want to put our kids through college we don't just want to waste time and you know f around for several hours a day you know in the middle of the night because we're working multiple jobs we're doing this because we want more money to support our family we want more freedom to be able to spend time with our family so we don't really have time to not be having it work out so um, is it gonna work are you viable that's what we're gonna talk about you wanna know why most moms fail I know you do they don't have a boss that's it. They don't have a boss. When you have a boss, they have a vision. When you have a boss, they have a plan. When you have a boss, they're telling you what to do, when to do it, how to do it. You have somebody who's got expectations, someone who's managing your accountability. Um, so if you don't have a boss, which in entrepreneur land means mentors and a coach, you're just going to be another statistic. That's it. Period. That's it. Because you cannot do this alone. You cannot wing this entrepreneurial thing. At some point during your entrepreneurial endeavor, you will not have the resources, won't have the support, won't know what to do, when to do it, and you'll be stuck. Having a team is everything. Really good case in point. My very first business was a sticker vending machine company. We had those, um, I had those two square foot machines that you've probably seen everywhere in, you know, everywhere. They're everywhere. They're in every Walmart. They're in restaurants. You've seen them everywhere. You put your 50 cents in and the little decals come out and the kids freaking love them. So my dad and a few other family members had been in vending. So I thought, well, this is good because I at least know people. But I was in my 20s, and I was definitely a total mid-20s know-it-all and didn't like a lot of support. So I got as little support as humanly possible. I took credit cards, and I leveraged my first five machines on my credit cards. I bought them with uh, my credit cards. I've just said that now three times. Hello! Um, which was a really big deal. I mean, if you don't have any money and you're putting money on credit cards, that's like risky. And it, and it felt tense for me. I'd never done it before, but I was excited. I felt passionate. I wanted to start my business for what I thought were all the right reasons. So I went out there into the marketplace and they were everywhere. They were everywhere. They were in all the bowling alleys. They were in the pizza places. They were in the grocery stores. Literally, I remember I was in Los Angeles and day after day after day for six months, nothing. No sales. And I have to tell you, after six months, that really wore on me. Everything, it, it was like, I'm a loser. I don't know what I'm doing and I'm freaking failing and I have no money it was really really bad <clears throat> so during this one pretty doubtful day where I was at that point where I'm just gonna give it up I don't wanna do this anymore it's not worth it I just gonna get a, I'm gonna get a job I'll go back to waiting tables I mean it all went went through my head I popped into this little donut store in the San Fernando Valley for those of you who live in Los Angeles, you know where I'm talking about. It was kind of out in bum, but there was this little donut store and there were kids everywhere. And I walked in and there was no sticker machine. I was really excited. There was no sticker machine in the donut store and it was mobbed with kids. So I came back the next day when it wasn't mobbed with kids to talk with the manager told them all about the sticker vending machine, two square feet of space, you know, you'll put it in there, it won't cost you anything, you're just going to make money, and I'll take care of everything else. He said yes. 
So here I was, I got my first account. I was so freaking excited after six months. Okay, there was hope. And so I was driving home, I stopped at Rite Aid and I bought a $5 bottle of champagne because that's all I could afford. And I remember I went home and I waited for my boyfriend to come home and when he did, about five minutes, you know, I, I maybe it'd been five minutes, I just popped off the, the top to the, I, I said that like I actually popped the champagne bottle off and I didn't, I unscrewed it because it was five dollars. So I unscrewed the cap, I'm just about ready to sip and toast to my very first account when my phone rings. I pick up the phone, it's the manager of the donut shop. My almost 200 pound machine fell on top of a three year old. In that moment, it was as if terror took over my body. The very first thing I thought of was, Oh my God, I just killed I just killed a child. So once he stopped screaming at me and was able to tell me that the kid was okay, then I could at least breathe easy for a minute because that was the most important thing. The second thing that popped into my mind while he was ranting and yelling, and I, to be honest with you, I don't even know all the things that he was saying. All I thought about was, I don't have business insurance. I don't have business insurance. I'm going to get sued. I'm going to go to jail. I mean, I didn't know to think about it logically. Like, I didn't have any money. So if I was to get sued, I wouldn't actually get sued for anything. But here I was in this predicament. I just lost my first account. I nearly killed a child. I might get sued. I have no business insurance. It was, it was in that moment the worst day that I can remember having in my life. So, cut to... They didn't sue me. They weren't even legal in this country. Lucky me? No, not really. I had a failed business and I really did. Uh, the child was okay. There were just some bumps and bruises. You know what happened was I didn't mount the, there's the top base of the sticker machine and then the stand. I didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't mount the stand properly onto the, onto the base of the machine. So it was loose, and 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 I just thought that was. So when he put when they put the fifty cents in, and the little kid came over, he was hanging on the coin mac, and it just pulled the machine over. I learned something really, really valuable after this. I didn't know what in the heck I was doing, and at this point, I had two choices to make: I was either going to quit my business, or I was going to do something different. Now, given that I was a 20, you know, mid-20s, know-it-all, there was no way I wanted to quit. I mean, I did want to quit, but I had way too much pride to quit. <clears throat> so I made the choice I was going to move forward, but not just move forward, that I was going to need help. I was going to need to suck up my pride and get help. So I called my dad. And at, after a few lectures about my lack of business insurance and a few other things, he said to me, Amy, it's fine that you're a solopreneur, but you cannot do business alone. You need to hire a coach. At the time, they called them consultants. You need to hire a coach, and I'm, and I'm going to show you how to put a board of mentors together. And so that's what I did. The board of mentors were people who could give me resources. They could give me accountability. They could give me creativity. They could help me think outside of the box about new ideas. They could help me set higher goals. And they knew so much more about business than I did. And it was in that, that moment when I put this, this success posse together that for the first time in that six months of having my business, I felt smart. And it certainly wasn't because I was smart. It was because the collective intelligence of all of us put together was insane. It was brilliant. And the very first thing that we did after I got the lecture about why would I start a business in a saturated market, well, I didn't even know to check whether the market was saturated because I had no mentors, because I had no coach. But when we sat down, and I said, I don't want to quit. What are my options? They said, well, we have to look at penetrating new markets. You have to think outside of the box and start looking at where these vending machines are not. And then we have to come up with a pitch to get in there. Here's the really good, awesome news. 
three months later, I landed Taco Bell. Vending machines were not in fast food restaurants. Not only did I get the first sticker vending machine in, the, in, in Taco Bell, but I located those machines all over the country, not only for my specific business and route, but for other people who had routes because I got the corporate account. And I'm just going to tell you right freaking now that never would have happened without a team because you only know what you know. You're only as smart as you are. And to pretend that you know everything or to make the assumption that you'll, you'll just figure it out without other people, to be so worried about as women that we don't want to ask for help because we don't want to put people out, you may as well just give up your businesses now. I'm telling you, if you're not willing to have mentors, if you're not willing to have a team, if you're not willing to get coached day to day, you should get out of your business now. What I should have spent the money on when I leveraged those machines was on a coach initially so that I could A, do the research that I needed for my business, B, create a brand, really understand the market out there and what markets I needed to penetrate and then have a plan to actually attack that. To go out there and do it, get my sales and marketing underway. I didn't know anything about administration, sales, marketing, branding. I didn't know anything about anything. So for all of you who are out there thinking about new businesses, for all of you who are out there thinking, I don't know why I'm challenged right now, you have to get an incredibly smart team together to help you get to that next level. And that's what I wanted to talk with you about today. So that's what Pitch Me Moms is all about. You, you got it. This is one resource so that you can run your ideas by me and we can talk about the viability of not only the idea but of you. And, what, and, and where you need to be in order to be successful. So that brings us to our guest, who I'm so excited about. She does business development for a company called Two Market Media. Her name is Alexia. She's a superstar. And <laughs> we're going to talk about our business idea today. Alexia, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Amy. How are you? Good. I can't see you. Do I get to uh, see you? You, you won't. <laughs> If you want to, you want to see my facial expression. Uh, well, I'd love, I'd love to see your face. Yes, I do want to see your face, right? we got to talk. All right, All right, so give it to me. Pitch me. Talk to me about this business. Well, um, as I was telling Nancy, uh, Scoop Media, which is the company I'm pursuing now or uh, working on now, it started as a radio show that I produced in school for a year and a half. Um, it started out as Scoop Radio, and it was just pretty much a platform that I provided for independent and underground artists and creatives so that they can, okay. you know, gain new outreach and cater to new demographics. And um, it's also because I love, you know, hearing people's stories and connecting with people who are extremely passionate about what it is that they do. And okay. so I decided... And so I decided to launch Scoop Media um, to expand that and, and take it to the next level and focus um, on creatives on a grander scale. Okay, so what is Scoop Media? What's the pitch? So uh, Scoop Media is pretty much going to be a home um, for creatives. I work on producing content, so like videos where I interview okay, different let me artists. Know. I'm going to go ahead and I, I'm going to jump right in here. When you're going to pitch your idea to anyone, and this has got to start right now, mm -hmm. because you're already working on it, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to be attracting people to it. You, you have to be, I still don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And we've already been talking for about a minute, and I'm still not sure what it is. I know you want to help creatives, so I know there's some passion there, which I also want to investigate. But what is it? Why should I care? What's pitch media? What do you do for anybody? What What's the business? So my goal and my mission is to inspire and inform. That's that's the whole premise of it. That's that's the purpose of my site. It's, yeah, but I wouldn't know why I would get involved with Scoop Media because I don't necessarily need to be inspired or informed. So right. what? Why would I get involved as a consumer with your business? You're right. Um, that's that's where I'm a little lost. I'm trying to. I've been trying to figure out how to figure out my demographic and what it is that I can do for other people more so than for myself. Because I'm always I'm a person that seeks inspiration a lot, and I want to provide that for others as well. But I really 
am trying to figure out the next steps to take. How do you inspire people? How do I, I, I inspire people by getting the stories of others. So, sorry. That's okay. So you're good at getting the story. Right. Like I'm good at finding really passionate creatives and scouting new talent. Um, and so what I do is I cover their stories so that I can inspire aspiring creatives. But um, I also, you know, like try to write <clears throat> messages that are going to gear people into the right direction in whatever field okay. it is that they're trying to get into. So how long have you been working on this? It's relatively new. I'm actually now building out my site. Um, I Like I said, I produced... Okay, okay, listen. For so here's what you've got to do. I believe that you inspire people, and I absolutely believe that you know how to get the story. Here's the thing. You're building out a site right now, but you don't know what your business is. Mm -hmm. And this is really important. You need to stop. You need to stop building out the site. What you need to understand right now is what is Scoop Media? Who do we serve? What's the demographic? And, and what do we serve them with? What do we provide them that they need? Right now, you don't have a business. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to go as far as to say you don't even have a – I'm not even hearing an idea right now. I'm hearing what you're good at. I'm hearing what you're capable of. I'm hearing what you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. But I don't have any idea what you're doing with Scoop Media. That doesn't mean you don't have some ideas about that. But what it means is, is in 30 seconds, you can't articulate it. And if mm -hmm. you can't articulate it, you can't be building the website. Because your website is the total sum parts of everything that you know about your business. When I go to your website, in a few words and a few images, right when I go to the homepage, I need to know who Scoop Media is, what it does and who it does it for and why I would care. Mm -hmm. And I need to know that in less than two minutes. And right now, I don't have any idea what Scoop Media is. Right. That's why I, I kind of strayed away from my, building out my business site for a bit. And I've just been working on my personal site um, in means to figure out my journey. And Yeah, but listen, why are you doing this? Like, why do you want to have... Because okay, I want to help forget. others. Like, that's... I mean, my end goal in life is to be a thought leader. It's to help people. It's to inspire them to do greater and be greater. Like, I know that I thrive off of motivation. When I see other people doing well and I hear stories about their struggles and what they've been through, um, it gives me hope. Like, I feel like my mission is to give others hope. And that's... And so I'm just trying to... Like you said... Figuring out my demographic is something that I need to do so that I can be better at building my service. Business. And you have to figure out your service. Right. So you don't even have a business right now. What you know, what you have is passion, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's awesome because you need passion and you're passionate about helping others. But let's dig into that a little bit more because right now you don't have the business piece done and that's what you have to work on. So from mm -hmm. a passion standpoint, like why does this matter to you? so much why do you want to help people and and at the end of the day it can't just be about helping people right you want to help yourself if you want a business there has to be a reason why mm -hmm. what's the reason so as I mentioned the reason why it all started was to provide a platform for people who aren't being recognized or gaining recognition. Okay, so I'm going to cut you off because I want you to go. I want, because put that over here. Mm -hmm. Go deeper than that. You got to go deeper than that. I know. Why it's do you want to have a, why do you want to have a business? Can we be personal for a minute? Cause you're not, I'm very, not, get personal with me, girl. You're not, <laughs> you're not hearing me. Let me be clear. Why do you, you, Alexia want a business? This is hard work, girl. This no, is freaking I know. hard work building a business, and you're not even close to ready. So we better get why you want to do this. Why does this even matter to you, to you personally? Not that you want to help people. I got that part. Personally, because I like being my own boss. Um, okay. I have always been a good leader. I know how to give direction. And so I just want to build out something that I can say I made on my own. Um, and like you said, there's a, there are a lot of things that you said in the first segment that kind of reminded me of me. Like everything that I do, I like to do it on my own. I love learning new things. And so I just, I want to leave a legacy. Like I want to leave a mark. Mm -hmm. I want to do For something who? that's innovative and, and different so that once I pass on, like 
I'll be known for my work. Um, for, who? for who? Yeah. Who do you want to leave the legacy to? I, I guess. Your family? For, for my family and for people like me who, you know, came, I'm like a first generation gra like college graduate. Um, I've watched my parents struggle and, you know, just, just doing something different and showing people that you can like beat out the odds and, and, you know, what did you, how did your parents struggle? Well, they're both, uh, immigrants. They both came here from Jamaica. And so like my mom began working at 10. Um, she had to fend for have, herself. You, when you grew up, did you have money? Were you able to eat? Did you have a roof? They, over they worked very hard. So yes, I was able to eat. They struggled. I, they honestly made a better life for me so that my brother and I didn't have to struggle. Okay. And so I just want to like, I'm trying to, you know, I guess honestly make them proud and show them that just like them, like their daughter is willing to do something too. Like I want to, I want to share my story with others so that they can be motivated by it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, here's the thing. This is very similar to what I talked about with the caller last week. Mm -hmm. It's, I know you want to leave a legacy and you said, I want to be able to, <laughs> there's my Siri talking to me, even though I'm not talking <laughs> to Siri. How ridiculous. You gotta love that. You want to build something. You want to leave a legacy. You want to inspire people with your story. I'm not inspired by your story right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not because, well, I don't really know why. Like meaning you might have an inspiring story, but you're not willing to be vulnerable enough right now to share your story and mm -hmm. how it actually impacts you to be able to dig deep. Okay. If I, do you understand? Like, I, I can get into my story of, say, failure with my sticker machine company or how I got fired and how it was the worst freaking, like, if, if, if this is going to be about your story and you want to share it with others because you want them to grow because of you mm -hmm. and not be stuck, then we need the story. Mm -hmm. So right now, you're missing two critical things. You're missing the story, that thing. You're in PR. You know exactly what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. You have to be, You where's the story? You need the story and you need the business. Mm -hmm. So right now, you, you're you not viable right now. Not because you're not capable. Girl, you're capable. There is mm -hmm. no issue there. But if you're going to build this business, if you're going to build Scoop Media, then we need a story that's captivating that we need a story that people are going to care about. It doesn't mean it has to be emotional, emotional, but it, but we need to care about it. No, yeah, I know. I know, okay. I know, I know right. that I need to like just be more vulnerable, be more open, and add the emotion to the passion. But like you said, um, being on the other side, it's really hard. Like I know what to tell people to do, <laughs> but when it comes to me, when it comes, absolutely, <laughs> I, I totally get it. But here's the thing, okay. We need entrepreneurs right now. We need you. We need someone who has your skill and your talent out there leading mm -hmm. people. We need that. Okay. So you got to get it together so you can be a role model mm -hmm. because otherwise you, right now you're in the, you're in the easy 90% failure rate and it has nothing to do with skill. You have the skill, but right now you need, and you've got the commitment, but you need the passion and you need, you need the plan. You don't have a business. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, can you work on that? Yeah. Because I know you can do that. I know you have it in you. Right now, get the story and get the plan. Figure out your demographic. Don't do anything more on that site till you can say, this is Scoop Media. This is who we help. And this is what we help them with. This is our service that we okay. provide. Okay. okay. I need you to work on that. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank awesome. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. You know, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is why Pitch Me Moms is here. We need to hear these stories. Mm. Alexia, you're an incredible role model for everybody right now because A, you have balls, girl. You're being vulnerable. You're willing to put it out there. Like you're willing to show the show people that they got to get their shit together. And if they mm. don't get their shit together, there is going to be no business. You're going to be in the 90% failure rate. And to be honest, I don't want to see you waste any time, all of you. We've got to stop wasting time. We have to get smart. So you've got to identify your story. You have to know that your business is going to solve a problem. 
Let's start there. We, we've got to be smarter, everyone, because we want you to succeed. We need entrepreneurs out there. And right now, women are the fastest growing sector in the entrepreneurial marketplace. Okay. Awesome. So that's Pitch Me Moms. Anybody out there have a great business idea, want to know whether or not they're viable, whether or not their business is going to make them money, I want you to email me at hello at amyapplebaum.com because you just might be our next guest. Don't be afraid of this, everyone. This is critical. It's critical to your success. I want you to be successful. My team wants you to be successful. So thank you to our guests, and I'll see you next time on Pitch Me Moms. Bye.